Well, all of these characters in a very short amount of time um, sort of have the carpet swept out from underneath them. And, um, and my sister Annie realizes that her ex is suing for custody of her daughter. My best friend Ruby has been dealing with health uh, problems with her daughter for quite some time and is just feeling absolutely desperate to find something to help her. And mine is really sort of a, a brand new thing. I, I discover first that my husband is cheating on me and then with a little bit more digging around, also realize he has depleted all of our funds and maxed our credit cards and very soon my children won't have a, a roof over their heads. So the culmination of these very, very desperate things happening lead them to sort of a rash and extreme decision because they had been sort of joking about this robbing a grocery store a few days before. So it's this very sort of current thing in their minds. And it was just like in this absolute panicked moment, it's like, yes, that's what we're gonna do. Because we were just talking about it and we were actually, we know, we know how to do it. So here they are in this ridiculous situation, robbing a grocery store. I think after they robbed the grocery store, one, they're on this incredible adrenaline rush, you know. They're back at the house going, oh my God, we did it. We pulled it off. I mean, it's just sort of exhilarating in a way that you couldn't imagine and absolutely terrifying as well. Um, but gives them this like weird little bit of confidence and a little sort of spring in their step until everything gets absolutely terrifying again. And then, you know, they show up and here are these gangsters in their kitchen and um, all things shift. But for just a little bit of a moment, they're a little cocky after that. You know, the relationships with these women is so strong and so loving. They're really, they bicker like people who have known each other forever and like sisters because they really are all sisters. Um, but they really have such a strong bond and we don't always see that kind of relationship and I think it's really powerful when we do. Um, there's, so, there's, there's a feeling that just feels good seeing women support each other instead of tear each other down or be competitive with one another. Uh, and they are trying to regain their power and they are trying to, more than anything, make things right in their family. And it's not a selfish thing, it's really going out to their family members. And while they're doing this, they're sort of saying like, this feels kind of good. You know, I keep saying, Beth, Beth is sort of feeling like, this is, the, this is how I wanna feel, this is the woman I wanna be. But they're all completely conflicted because they, they really are stand-up citizens and what they're doing is illegal and terrible and, and could eventually harm people. But they're so wrapped up in this kind of craziness and adrenaline in this world that they sort of start compartmentalizing and justifying a lot to uh, continue down this road. I hope it comes across as dark comedy. I hope it comes across as absurd. And, and one thing I really love about these characters is their mothers, their wives in the Midwest, and and they're hard workers, and they and they think they've sort of got it all together, and things are going just as how they always imagined them. Um, but these characters are not written like stereotypes, and these are cool modern women uh, who are trying to figure things out, and they're quirky, and they're funny, and they have really great senses of humor, and they make weird jokes in awkward times. Annie and Beth are sisters, but Ruby grew up down the street, and they grew up together. And, and Beth and Ruby are really best friends. And I think for many, many years, Ruby probably tolerated my little sister, Annie, because she's a real pain in the ass. Um, but she's part of the package deal, you know? And I, I just think that we were always in each other's homes, and we were there for the, the birth of our children, and we love and know each other's husbands forever, and we really are like a family unit. And we're the kind of people who just open the front door and walk in because we're so familiar. <laughs> I love working with Retta and May so 
much it's hard, like it hurts my heart sometimes how much I absolutely adore them. We are working so hard in such long hours and if you didn't absolutely love someone, it would be so difficult. It really is one of those extraordinarily lucky moments and the chemistry is real and I appreciate them as actresses. They're just spectacular and they make me better and, and they are always coming up with something or doing something that I never would have expected, which makes it super fun to react to and they keep me laughing all the time. Well, uh, for the most part, Good Girls, I would say, is sort of a story about people who have been pushed to their limits and are backed up against the wall, and they basically decide that it's time to take matters into their own hands and try to take control of their lives, and then what ends up happening is sort of the domino effect, and they lose control of everything. Yeah, my character, Annie, is a, it's really fun. It's actually one of the most fun roles I've gotten to play just because... In some ways, she's so different from me. She's very, uh, and especially different from the roles that I've played in the past. She's very sort of irresponsible and fly by the seat of her pants. And to me, she kind of represents the fantasy element in this show uh, because she sort of doesn't take anything seriously. Um, and she's she's definitely, uh, she's the most spontaneous one. She sort of doesn't think things through. She sort of just goes by her intuition and what she thinks they should be doing. And she's also, she's just fun. And I feel like usually I end up playing the wise beyond their years teenager or the super mature responsible kid or whatever it is. So it's, it's been really fun to play her. Another thing I love about Annie is the fact that she's a single mom. Never gotten to play a mom before except Amber on Parenthood, and that was sort of towards the end, and I didn't really get to explore what that was like. Um, and so it's been amazing to have that experience of playing a mom, especially it's so funny because I am a child actor, so I grew up like in the passenger seat always looking up at TV moms and stuff, and then now to be in that seat and look over and see my kid looking up at me, and I'm really super tight with Izzy, and I love their relationship, and I love you know everything about sort of how they're – friends also and how they've sort of helped each other grow and raised each other and everything else. So I, I really love the the element of deep bond and love that she has with her kid. Obviously, as you grow, you, you mature and you change and the things that you think you need to be happy are different. And so I think Greg sort of was like, Annie's crazy. I'm going to find somebody, somebody completely different and try to be as grounded and straightforward as possible. And Annie obviously really hasn't found anybody. So, But I think they will always have that connection of really needing each other, even though they sort of hate each other. So I'll be interested to see where that goes. These characters are interesting and you want to know more about them. And it doesn't feel like, you know, anything except a great show with excellent women at the helm of it and I mean I have been always wanting to be I it's been time for there to be way more shows with the females being the leads it is it is especially right now with everything that's going on in the country especially and in the world it's never been a more important time for there to be strong independent quirky interesting different real full women telling their stories and being heard and showing their sides of things and that was a big, you know, thing that drew me to this this project was the fullness of all these characters and how rich their storylines were and it doesn't feel like they're talking heads for anything. It's these you really get to know every single aspect of not only them as individuals but them within the context of their family and within the context of this friendship and this bond that they've created over the years together and I think it's fascinating. For me to be surrounded, honestly, not only by two people that really do feel like my family already, Christina and Retta, but also Jenna and Janine and Dean and everybody who's really involved in this project. Everybody is so passionate about it and we just like eat it and sleep it and breathe it and we talk about it all night and we text each other in the night about it and questions and how to figure this out and what would they be wearing and what's the thing and who were they before this and what have they been through like – and, you know, there have been difficult times and long nights outside and the cold, whatever it is. And to be able to have the people around you that you genuinely love and feel like are your genuine, passionate friends and always will be, it's – I feel so lucky and I'm excited that we get to make something that we really believe in and put it on the TV.
Good Girls is about three women who have had enough of not being able to handle their business and they take a less than popular route to figure things out. Um, some would say it's extreme and they would describe it as necessary and uh, almost uh, their last option, their last opportunity, their the final straw, do what you gotta do kind of thing. Ruby is in a place that a, a lot of parents find themselves in when their child is sick. She feels helpless. And it's almost, that's the only way she would have done what they did by robbing the grocery store. So I think she, I think I, I she is, a, she finds herself in a position where she just, there's nothing she can do. And so she does this crazy thing because it's something she can do, even though most people would not take that option. Yes, it is a robbery, uh, but the, the, they went into it thinking it's not that much money. Um, they never, uh, they always let the people get away with the money because it's not that serious. No one's going to fight for money that's not theirs. And they went in thinking it's only 30 grand. Not a big deal. And then when it turns out it's not just 30 grand and it's, not just a robbery of a small grocery store and has blown up into something bigger, that's when they have to basically, <laughs> quote unquote, man up and deal with the situation that they've, they've put themselves in. Once they commit the robbery, they feel like they've done something. The, you know, they're, they feel good. They feel accomplished. They feel now I finally have been able for Ruby. I did something that's going to help my child. You can either let things happen to you or you can do something about it. And especially it's, it's easier to, to fight back in a group. So when you know you have a backup, you know, you have um, a support system, it just makes things a little bit easier. So that female empowerment comes from these female friends you have the, the, and, and with these two women are, they've been in Ruby's life for a long time. So they know they have each other's backs. They always have, there's no, it's not, it's not the kind of thing where something goes bad. You're scared. This person's going to rat on you that they know that's not going to happen. Um, in the case of Annie, you're scared of how much further she's going to take it. I think Ruby's position when it comes to Annie is, all right, can you slow down just a little bit? I mean, I love you, but don't get me cut. You know, that kind of thing. We all do this to take care of our kids. Um, but they're different in that um, I think Ruby is a... Well, Annie is very loving and, you know, to her kids, her child too. Um, they're, they're different in that Annie is more of a wild child. Uh, Beth tends to be more of a by the book kind of mom. And, and Ruby is kind of a smother you with love kind of mother. I think she's a little bit obsessed in a good way with her kids, you know, like she wants everything to be okay. She wants them to have the classic childhood experience, even though, you know, her daughter is in a position where she can't necessarily have that because she can't run like other kids. You know what I mean? She can't um, be away from her oxygen tank <laughs> the way, you know, the average kid can. One, you have to have great characters. And I think that um, Jenna and the writers uh, have done a great job of building these characters and then using things from our personalities to add to these characters to make them feel more 
you know, feel more at home in our bodies. And then writing scripts where you don't see something coming. So there's always a surprise at the end, yeah, or, you know, the cliffhanger. And they're not necessarily giant cliffhangers every episode, but by the time I get to the, the last page of the script, I'm like, oh, and I think that makes great TV. Okay, everyone's going to school. You brush your teeth, wipe her face, pants. They gotta work late. Who knew so many people bought cars on a Friday night? <laughs> Hey, you got plans later? My church is having a bring a friend night. I'm just not really much of a church person. You're definitely a stuck up bitch. She can barely make it through the school day right now. Here. We can't. Carla. There's this new drug that Fine. just got approved. Out. Oh my God, can you please just listen to me for one damn minute? The drug you're talking about is 10 grand a month out of pocket. Why do we have hardly anything in our accounts? I made a few bad decisions at work. Oh, honey, what can we do? Nancy and I are suing you for custody. Seriously. My husband and I work all the time. The transplant lists can take months. So when do you want to do this? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a robbery! You wanna? <laughs> yeah, my old job, we got robbed all the time. Do they get caught? The dumb ones do. They don't dick around with the registers. That's small potatoes. You're gonna take my friend here to the cash vault. How much is in the vault? 30 grand, give or take. Are you okay in there? What's your name? What year is it? I robbed a grocery store. How much did we get? We got more than the 30 grand. How much more? I handled the mortgage because you couldn't. Are you gonna stay in the house? I get to stay in the house. Your clothes are in the car. You know I'm about the new med's a great option. We'll start her on it and we'll see how she does. Are you, Oprah? I'm gonna take a shower. I smell like booze and crime. Ah! What do you want? The money you stole from us. You really gotta be careful, ladies. We'll see you real soon, yeah? We're not gonna sit back and let everything be taken away from us. We have to do this ourselves. 